Right, so I'm back on my virtual box. Um, so this is not actually the production release of um, Linux from scratch 9, it's the release candidate one that I was testing on, but there's virtually no difference, so um, it will be good for carrying on the demonstration of the installing the Grub and EFI system onto the hard disk. Um, I'll also show you the problem which I quite honestly believe is to do with VirtualBox. Now I did done a bit of testing earlier on um, and it seems the commands we run write some information to some um, non-volatile RAM on the um, virtual PC um, and I'm guessing that the virtual manager doesn't emulate that correctly in that it doesn't retain the the information so um, as I say, unfortunately I haven't got a spare machine where I can test this that's got um, EFI boot um, it's not something well I've got a couple of machines but not something I want to start playing around with on those machines um, so anyway what I've got here is um, a machine with 8 gigabyte four processors the hard disk is on port zero and I've got the Ubuntu um, install disk, live DVD install disk on um, port one. So you'll see that when I start this off it won't actually boot from the hard disk, it'll just go to the, the um, optical disk. So it, sh it will show that the EFI um, is not being booted correctly but I'll install it and we'll, we'll see if we can get it booting just by rebooting but as soon as the um, machine is shut down that's that's when it seems to forget the settings but I can show you a way to um, get around that problem in virtual manager in virtual box sorry so I'll start this machine off and there you go it's um, come to the boot disk for the um, so the boot menu for the optical disk so I'll have to wait for um, Ubuntu to load which won't take long as it's on a, an image Okay, so I'll get a terminal up. And I'll become a root. Yes. Can't seem to type and talk at the same time without making mistakes. Uh, right, so now I'll get Firefox up. to the book for the Linux from scratch and remember it's the system D one we're following so if I do F disk minus L you see there's my disk that I've been working on there and there's the partitions same as before um, if I partition as a swap and the main root file system so to carry on we need to load up the virtual file systems and we need the new true command which is in that section and we'll be carrying on from this point here so export LFS equals forward slash mnt LFS make that directory location Mount the root to LFS. Mount the 
boot onto LFS. I think Ubuntu automatically starts up the swap partition. It has done SDA2, it's found it and used it. <coughs> So we can now, now we've got those two file systems mounted, which are our, part of our Linux from scratch system. We can do these bind commands to mount these virtual file systems ready for entering the troop again. And when you do this, you have to remember it's the troop command at the end of chapter six that we need to use. So here we are again, back again. Uh, right. Oh yes, that's why I did this yesterday. Let's get rid of that log file. So I'll just check we're on the right system. LSB release. So you can see the, the only difference is that the yesterday's demonstration that I was doing was um, on the actual 9.0 release, but this is a, the release candidate when I was testing. So that's the only difference. OS release, again, there's the signature and the last one that's on here. There we go again. And there's the kernel version we're running. Oh, sorry, that's the Ubuntu version, of course, because we booted into Ubuntu. So you'll see when we actually boot into the system, and that'll go to 5.2.3, I think it was. We had something like that. <coughs> okay, so we're prepared now to carry on. Um, so if you remember the last, the previous video, we'd compiled the kernel and we'd copied the kernel into boot, copied the system map and the config file. So if I do this myself on boot, you'll see those files are there. 5.28 is the kernel version, that was it. So now we need to do the grub install, but um, what we, we don't actually follow these commands here. They're slightly modified for the um, hint that we are following. So I found that you can get this hint up from April if you do LFS EFI hint April 2018 into Google. And it's this first link here that comes up. That's the one we were following yesterday. So just whiz down to the bottom. <coughs> And this is the bit for installing Grub, and you can see here it's got a different, slightly different install command. The one on uh, the Linux from scratch book is um, a BIOS install. So, because we haven't got that installed at all, we can't use that command. It'll, it'll probably work, but it wouldn't be useful for our situation. It wouldn't prove that we're using a, a uh, native EFI boot. So I'll copy this in here and it runs straight away. But there's a, a debug option here with a grub.log. So if we just look at that grub.log, you can see we've got some errors. It's complaining, can't find a device map and it can't find the EFI directory. So I've seen when I've been researching about EFI that some places refer to forward slash boot, forward slash EFI with EFI in capitals and other places refer to EFI in lowercase. So forward slash boot, forward slash EFI in lowercase. I'm not sure if it doesn't matter or if it does matter. I'm not sure if Grub install is actually looking for EFI in lowercase, but um, a lot of what I've seen, including here, I think, in this case, in this hint, um, EFI seems to be in capitals. So, in fact, it's not saying that. It actually looks like they're putting the information at a lower level in, in two 
EFI subdirectories, so I'm not quite sure why that is. It's, it's not needed from what I've seen. But it could be that Grub needs to see boot EFI in lowercase, whereas um, I've been practicing with EFI in uppercase. In fact, what I might try and do... No, uh, no even if it is looking for it, it, it doesn't actually exist at the moment because... All we've got in boot is, well, Grub's just created that directory and I believe it's empty, but all the only other things we've got here is these files we copied when we'd finished creating the kernel. So let me just check, I'm sure that Grub is empty. So that's one reason why it can't find the EFI partition because it's brand new, there's not an existing one. So I'm going to try making EFI in capitals rerun this command no it's failed because it's run too quickly yeah it's still failing so let's remove that and create it with lowercase see if no the grub install still hasn't found it so it doesn't seem to make a difference Um, oh, that's a point. One thing I should just double check again. It checks this um, directory in the virtual file system to see if EFI is actually available. Um, it says it actually actually found it, so that's that's good. Um, so let's just remove that lowercase EFI, and we'll quickly do a cat on that virtual file system, oh ok, didn't copy properly just to prove ourselves we can see uh, sorry ls so there's all the EFI stuff, so we definitely booted or, or Ubuntu is definitely booted with the EFI system active so that's we're, we're all ok so ok so to get around this grub not installing, what we need to do is to add another um, option to the install command and we need to actually tell it where the EFI directory is going to be so we had this command, uh, sorry this option minus minus EFI minus directory uh, equals and then we specify the root where the EFI directory will go so we want to specify forward slash boot and that's where it will create the EFI directory in that directory there. So you see now this command's taken a lot longer. It took about a second or so rather than just coming back instantly. And if we just um, tail the back end of that grub.log file, that's all we need to really look at. You can see that it's running a few commands here. It's doing mod probe to uh, add in this module. And then the key command is running this EFI boot manager, which is the command that installs the um, this uh, EFI file, this binary file, into the NVRAM, the non-volatile RAM, and it updates the boot order. So you can see the current boot is zero, which is the CD or DVD ROM. And then we've got other options for booting, which is to boot from an EFI hard drive or an EFI internal shell. But this command has added in a fourth option, which is numbered 003, which is there. And the boot order is to boot that third, or sorry, fourth option as the default. That's the first one it's going to try and boot from. So that is the bit that it appears that VirtualBox won't retain when, when this machine is shut down. It retains it if you just reboot the machine, because the machine hasn't powered down. But it seems that the non-volatile RAM on, on the VirtualBox is in fact volatile. It does forget any settings that are set. So the next thing we need to do is to create the grub.cfg. So we'll just copy this paste it in here. Now when I press enter it won't actually finish because that EOF command that terminates this, I think it's called a here file is it I think, top of my head, um, it needs to be just EOF on its own without any spaces so just type EOF manually. 
and then we'll edit that just to get rid of the spaces and make some changes to the partitions that are required so uh, let's edit that and grub grub.cfg so we can do uh, three there four x to remove these four spaces just do that all the way down Oops, not too many times in one line. Right, get rid of that line. So we need to set the root. So let's get rid of all that. And it's HD zero comma one because it's the the root is the partition that's got the boot in the kernel in basically. So it's on hard disk zero and the partition numbering starts at one. So the hard disk starts at zero and the partition start at one. Then we need to modify this so because this is the boot partition, we don't need the prefix boot. If there was no separate boot partition, then you would need that prefix boot that I've just deleted. But we have got separate partitions, so there's actually a, an error here. This semicolon shouldn't be here. Um, so let's save that because I need to copy the name of the um, kernel, which is that there. And I'll just paste it in after the forward slash. And then the root, which is the root file system, is SDA3. And RO for read only is good practice to mount that initially as read only in case there's any problems with the booting. And finally, one thing that's worth adding is to set the log level to 3. If it's not set to 3, you get a lot of quite persistent kernel messages appearing on. Um, because we've booted with system, or will be booting with system D, uh, it's not quite the same way of suppressing those kernel messages as it is in the sysv init um, way of uh, initializing the, the Linux system. So you can suppress them at this point here. Um, I'll just put the kernel name there as well, just for completeness, even though it's only a text field. So that should be it. Just one final visual check of that file. So you see from comparing it to the one in the book, there's a few more modules that are insert inserted. This partition, GPT, GZIO, um, a couple more here. And then you've got this font thing as well that needs to be installed as well. So that looks okay. Oh, no it doesn't. I've just spotted a mistake. I've got an extra eye in there. So that's all there is really to it. So we can carry on with the rest of the book now. So, well, you can see these are bits I've done when I was testing this, but we can just paste these in again. Um, just put my name in here. Oh. I'll press insert at the correct time. Since so that one create the LFS release and this last one as well. Okay. This is about getting counted if you want to add to the some scratch numbers. So we log out, we unmount all these virtual file systems. 
and my LFS in the boat and the LFS and we can now do a reboot so I remove the installation so I'm going to remove the um, DVD that we booted from uh, if I press the right option devices optical drive so I remove the CD press enter and you see it's booted this is the grub that we've just installed and there's system debooting so it looks all good there's no errors uh, oh, let's log in first we'll type any commands there's the D message now you can see these I can't point uh, it's, yeah these messages I, I don't know if it's a kernel setting or if it's because I booted in the system do what it what, what it is but these are appear quite regularly so it's um quite important really to get that um, log level 3 onto the uh, uh, kernel command line in, in the boot file so we can just check that we've got those files we just created so well it says 9.0 systemd because I've been copying from the production book but this is actually RC the release candidate one um, but you can see that stuff we've just created just to prove that we have actually booted into the one we were just editing. So there you go. So that's that's all running. And something else we can just check to make sure that we have actually booted uh, with uh, EFI. Um, EFI. And and there's those files again that we saw before so if we weren't booting with EFI that, that directory wouldn't exist at all so that's that now as I say as soon as this machine gets shut down if I do a reboot this will just happily reboot again with no problems there we go there's the grub boot menu press enter and system D kicks off and we're back in again so there's no problems at all with it booting but as soon as we shut this down and power down the virtual PC that's when it won't boot again so if I Boot this up. We get this UEFI interactive shell, which is the actual UEFI system um, that's booting. So uh, there is some. I've been playing around with this. There is some commands you can do here. Um, not really quite sure exactly what to do, but I've found you can. Uh, right, I can't copy and paste it, can I? Um, you can do things like uh, fs0, which is this um, block device here, which is the hard disk partition one. So that's that's our our system. If we do ls, you can see the grub and the fi there and our kernel. Um, so I'm not sure if we'll be able to actually do ls EFI LFS. Yeah, there's there's the EFI. I'm not sure if we'll have to actually be able to run that or not. Let's try it. I haven't tried this at all. X64.EFI. Yeah, that's actually booted it. So that's that's the way to recover it with that that um, shell that appears, the UFI shell that appears when it can't boot from a disk. So you see we're back in here now. And as before, um, actually if I do, if I 
boots manager. Yeah, you see that setting is not there anymore. That LFS setting is not. And it's going to try to boot from the internal shell again. I've tried settings to the hard drive and that still doesn't work either. Um, now that may be because there isn't a default. Uh, that might be something to try. That might be. Uh, right, okay, I've got this as auto mount. I believe there's a default um, boot option, so it could be that the fact that the default boot option is missing is the reason why this is failing. Um, I'll just pause the video and try that out and come back after I've tried it. <laughs> 